Something is about to happen for someone. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. I didn't know that there are some people that have caught our holy madness. That's a Nasarawa group. <laughs> Hallelujah. They will be presenting again in the second service tomorrow. <laughs> Hear me? If you are too gentle, you will never succeed. You are too gentle for the kind of success you desire. You need some levels of holy madness. And like I've always said, every human being has 1% madness. Please bring out your 1% madness and everything around you will change. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Failure will never know your address again. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Whatever want to keep your destiny on the same spot, the hand of God will break their bands. Make that amen louder. Before you take your seat, there is someone that desires a change for his family. You are in this camp. Your heart cry is not just you. Lord, touch my family. We are going to pray. Scripture said, the Lord of hosts has proposed. And who shall this and all? His hand is stretched out. And who shall turn it back? Lord, stretch forth your hand of intervention for my family. Overturn shame. Overturn delay. Overturn captivity. Whatever look like an embargo over my family. Lift up your voice. This is the youth camp. God will intervene for your family. God will rewrite your family story. Let God hear your voice. Let God hear your voice. Lord, for my family, for my brother, for my sisters, for my brothers, for my sisters, for my relations, let your hand of intervention, like never before, break forth. Let your hand of intervention break forth. Leron de Bredish, Ezuta, Meklerondo, Jekutetori, Redonabri Katoria, Jekloperiata. Let your fire sweep through my family, burn every chaff. Destroy the manipulations of the wicked. Rekle in Nalosh. Eran nekle keto zabala. Rekle peri adonare li jegu dalada. Redadine kuteto. Jekle pebredi. By the blood of Jesus. Retora dine shuzali katari. By the blood of Jesus. Endo breketura ndialata. Jekle peranda gayagadagada. Jekle pebredi lata. By the blood of Jesus, Elomen de Kuzanate Lata. By the blood of Jesus, Recloperia Etonata. By the blood of Jesus, Iramento no Sunateta. By the blood of Jesus, Iropelato, Jecusine, Recatane. By the blood of Jesus, Iropalianga dosha, Lagodon no Secutete. By the blood of Jesus. Irododo Rusa Zona Jekloperata by the blood of Jesus. I judge the oppressions of the wicked by the blood of Jesus. I cause the manipulations of the enemy by the blood of Jesus. I decree let the programming of the enemy fail. Let their programming fail. Jekoparianda Leropoto Jinamenota. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You have cried for the sake of your family. You will see the hand of God's intervention. 
If you are the person I'm talking to, your amen will be the loudest. Any evil call that has tied any member of your family, the, the fire of the Holy Ghost sword, the, the evil rope. That evil call catch fire. Every door connected to your family laughter. By the authority in the name of Jesus. I decree let the door open. Let the door open for your family. Let the door open for your brothers. Let the door open for your sisters. It shall be well with you. You will hear good news for your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. In Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. It is my new dawn era. Congratulations. Put your hands together for the Lord and please take your seat. Still in the series on my way. On the way to your high places. I focus this night. You are responsible for the outcome of your life. Tell your neighbor you are responsible. Now hear me. The essence of this camp meeting is not to leave you with fun, but to plant fire in your body. If after all the fun, there is no encounter, you have wasted this opportunity. Twenty children don't play for twenty years. It is time to define your life. Only people that define are permitted to find. You are absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life. Who is angry with you does not have access to the plan of God for your life. Who doesn't like your face does not determine when God blesses you. You are absolutely responsible for the outcome of your destiny. Nothing moves destiny forward like an encounter. And until you are ready to go forward, you remain on the same spot. Life presents to us opportunities. Opportunities forms the sequel for destiny fulfillment. No matter where you find yourself, God will always create opportunities. Now you have an opportunity to decide the outcome. Hear me? You can decide your outcome. You can decide your outcome. You are not at the mercy of anybody. You are not an object of pity. People they pity, they are in the pit. You are a creature to be envied. You were designed for envy. If truly you are responsible for the outcome of your life, there are conscious decisions and there are conscious determinations you must give yourself to. 
Papa said that destiny is a product of an adventure. Nothing works until you make it work. If anything good must work in your life, you must respond to your ability. That's why they call it responsibility. You respond to your ability. Let me put it this way. Everyone that mess up his mind to see a good outcome, say with me, a good outcome, for his life and his destiny must make up his mind to upgrade. Tell your neighbor, upgrade. If you don't upgrade, you will be outdated. If you don't upgrade, you will be a proverb. If you don't upgrade, you cannot future in your future. If you don't upgrade, you don't stand a chance to take what belongs to you in destiny. And upgrading brings you to what I call capacity building. I will center more on this before we now hit the four major points. Solomon moved his destiny forward by increasing his capacity. When we talk about capacity, it is not limited to university. Solomon did not go to any university, but he understands what it means to be a poet. He was a horticulturist. He was a botanist. He understood marine engineering. He understood animal biology. Let me tell you the truth. Going to school only informs you are you hearing what I'm saying now? It only does what? Going to school gives you an edge because you have what they call knowledge. You know you will have an edge. What you know gives you an edge. What you don't know plays a limit on you. Bill Gates is a dropout from college, not university. But today he's controlling the world. In one of the documentaries I read, he said, What the world will be using in 2050? He has it in his pocket. He'll be bringing them out one by one. And you'll be paying for it, whether you agree or not. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? In Shiloh 2017, a young girl called Nkechi. How many of us had the testimony of Nkechi? Nkechi lost her father some years back in Asaba. The mother is a deaconess in our church in Asaba. But she made up her mind that she was going to stand out. She made up her mind that she was going to stand out. And she started. Hear me? This saying is true. You are responsible for the outcome of your destiny. Anything you are pursuing now, if you pay your price, the thing will be pursuing you. Nkechi stood her ground, settled down, not looking for a boy that will send text message, I love you. She sat down, made sure she 
read her book well. She finished from the University of Port Harcourt. I know, I know the person I'm talking about finished from the University of Port Harcourt. She made sure she didn't end it there. She had to press further. Press further. To the point now that Harvard is now studying her. You know, there's a difference between I want to go and study and they are studying you. They are studying you means that there is something you have. I want to let you know you are too loaded to end up a failure. You must not end up a failure. You must not end up a non-entity. You are too loaded. Too loaded. Too loaded. Too loaded. That Zankechi has been managing her life to the point now that her research is now what Harvard is studying. You are responsible. If you end up a failure, you disappointed your generation. You didn't only disappoint your family, your generation. Scripture said the earnest expectation of creature waited. How long will they wait? Waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now we are in Easter youth camp where everybody should be serious. Believing God for a word that will challenge him or her. And here some people will be sitting in the congregation. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dog, are you in the zoo? Now, the little linkage is earning in dollars. The little linkage has the right now to travel to any part of the world in a space of four years. Five years from now, what will you look like? Ten years from now, where will you be? Screaming as if you are a winch. <laughs> Should I tell you something? It's time to get serious. Tell your neighbor, it's time to get serious. Listen, whatever you fail to make happen for yourself, nobody will make it happen for you. Whatever you fail to make happen for yourself, nobody will make it happen for you. Yes, you may look for hands. I mean, persons you can point accusing finger to blame. If this person has done this, if this person has helped me, I would have been here. It's a lie. Solomon enlarged his capacity. You owe yourself one task of increasing your understanding. David said, the righteousness of thy testimony is everlasting. He said, give me understanding and I shall live. Your understanding is what increases your chance of living well. Living well. Living well, obviously, is your choice. It's nobody's fault. If you are not living well, it's your fault. If you are living well, you made a choice to live well. So if you are not increasing capacity, look at the implication. You will underperform you will underachieve. You will become a mockery to life and to destiny. If you are not increasing capacity, you will underperform, you will underachieve, you become a mockery in life and in what? Destiny. 
You will give people the opportunity to say, show me they say they're the winner. Show me one thing that is winning around them. If you are not increasing capacity, you will operate your life below potentials. When you are loaded with excess potentials, your potentials are powered by the DNA of Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. If you don't increase your capacity, you will operate your life with low vision. You will be working with people with low vision, low dream. Check the people you are working with. It's because there is something comfortable around your life that makes them to hang around you. Simply say, where there is no vision, the people perish. When you walk with people of low dream, even the little dream you have, you lose it. Yes, I know. Eagles don't hang around with vultures. Eagles don't hang around with chickens. Some of the people hanging around you now is a disservice to your destiny. They are increasing your slow motion. You need to hang around people that will fast forward you. you hear me? There are, there are people you need to meet and you enter auto gear. I'm telling you. There are people you need to meet. You change from gear four. You enter, you enter drive two. If you don't increase capacity, you will limit destiny. Tell your neighbor, go for knowledge. Knowledge is the currency to power destiny. Thanks be unto God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all manner of spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. If you lack knowledge, you don't only become a mockery in life and in destiny. The glorious destiny God has given to you will be crying out, Why? What are you doing to me now? Eh? I should have been manifesting now. I should have been manifesting now. If you don't want to, if you don't want to do anything, please die now so that God will transfer it into another person. I'm telling you the truth. Increasing capacity opens the door for possibilities. Because whatever your eyes can see is a picture to where you can reach. It's a picture to what you can achieve. It's a picture to what can come to pass in your life. Increasing capacity is a pointer to what can enter your hand. When capacity is on the rise, versatility becomes cheap. Skillfulness is no longer a struggle. There are too many things God has loaded inside of us. Talking about the parable of the talent. He gave some two. Gave some three. Gave another one one. The one they gave two multiplied his own to four. The one they gave three multiplied his own to six. The one they gave one said that I know that you are a wicked and shrewd master. Like, like reaping where you did not sow. So when you took off, I went and dug the hole and buried it so that when you come back, 
I will give it to you because me, I don't want trouble. Hear me and hear me well. Everything, <laughs> scripture says, God has given to us everything that pertains to life. And what? God has given to us everything. So nothing is missing. Nothing is meeting, missing. He has given to us everything. But you must go in search of these things before the lines will begin to fall for you in pleasant places. What does it mean to increase in capacity? Number one, increasing in capacity is taking your destiny beyond its present limit. So wherever you are now, you can go beyond it. Whatever you have now, you can achieve more than that. Even what men have told you is not possible, you can even dis disgrace them and achieve it before their face. No wonder the psalmist said, Thou prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Increasing in capacity also means giving your destiny to achieve more. Achieve more. You can achieve more. Now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or what? Think. According to the power that worketh within us. According to the power that worketh within us. What does it mean to increase capacity? Increasing capacity is also means to enhance the quality of your destiny. Destiny is in qualities. Quality upon quality. The path of the joss is like a shining light that shineth brighter and brighter. The brighter does not end. I'm brighter, I'm brighter, I'm brighter unto a perfect day. No wonder Papa said we have not had a better last year. Every year is an improvement on the previous. Why? You must secure light. The more lighted you become, the more quality your destiny becomes. It takes light to improve the quality of life. If you lack light, you will not enjoy life. If you lack light, you will not enjoy life. It is light that enhances the brightness and quality of life. No wonder he said, you are not born again to suffer again. But look at it. They know not. Neither will they understand. He said, all the foundation of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods. They know not. If you don't know, and if you don't want to make efforts to know, things will continue to go off course. My people are destroyed for lack. Not that knowledge is not available. God has no problem increasing our capacity. The problem lies with us responding to our abilities. One of the greatest challenge and problem of our present day youth is procrastination. Ago. The spirit of ago. Ago, ago. Jesus said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can do what? Walk. Hear me? Solomon said, it is good for a young man to bear his what? When he is what? If you fail to do this thing now, a time is coming when you will not have 
the energy to do it. Procrastination. God has never run out of supply. But the truth is that we will, many of us will always lack containers to receive. He has never run out of supply. And Daniel proposed in his heart, after this camp meeting, what have you proposed to do to upgrade your life? Hear me? Four need they finish you. There are two things that await every man. Pleasure and pressure. If you choose pleasure now, you will meet pressure tomorrow. But if you choose to pay your price now, you will enjoy pleasure ahead of you. If they obey and serve me, they will spend their years in prosperity and their days in pleasure, not pressure. I remember I had an a lecturer that, was, that taught us advanced chemistry. He always make this comment, there are people that want to pass now and read later. Meaning, you understand what I mean? Give me a book. Let me pass. I will read tomorrow. There is nothing like that. Anything you fail to do for yourself now remains undone. It can never be done. I want you to hear this. Whatever you are doing now is securing not just a future for you, but a future for your own family. You are absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life. Now, do you know what? Do you know what? The price you pay now determines the price on your head. I hope you know bright price is different from one person to another. Bright price. Should I give you an example? How many of us have heard of Linda Ikeji? You have heard of her? Can a brother walk up to her and say, the Lord say you are my wife? What will happen to the brother? No, police will get him arrested. Do you agree with me? Why? Because his head must first of all be what? Correct. So as you are now, you are determining your price. Because the price tag you put on your forehead will determine the customer that will come. You hear me? Are, are, you, are you getting where, I, where I'm going now? Yeah. Increase your price. Don't reduce your price. You are underrating yourself when you don't go for knowledge. You are reducing your value. And you know, the more you reduce your value, the more anybody can talk to you. The more you reduce your value, even a conductor can price you. Hey, the blood of God. There's nothing like that. Increase your value. Tell your neighbor, increase your value. There are some people that have gone for a job interview. They ask them, how much can we pay you? There are others, they just tell them, this is what we will pay you. If you agree, start tomorrow. If you don't agree, go. True or false? But the truth is this, you can't change what you are comfortable with. If you are comfortable with your present condition now, there will be no drive for a change. 
If you are enjoying the way life is going for you, there is no drive for a change. You are just satisfied. Just like the man by the pool of Bethesda. <laughs> he was there for a good 38 years. Let's assume that he came there when he was 15 years. Scripture didn't tell us his age. They only told us how many years he was there. You can't change what you are comfortable with. If your destiny must experience a more better outcome, you must make up your mind to change your capacity. Let me take for another good example now. No matter how much you love the shoe you had before and you have outgrown the shoe, will you wear the shoe? You say, this shoe, I must wear you by force. I must wear carpenter. Expand the shoe. My leg must enter. It can't work. Even if you force your leg inside, what will happen? No, it will not spoil. It will be biting you. The shoe will be telling you, I'm not your mate again. I'm not your size again. Go and look for your size. Now hear me. Where you are now, you have outgrown it. Tell your neighbor, I have outgrown it. If you must respond to your destiny, there are certain areas that must not be neglected. Let it keep ringing in your spirit, soul, and body. I am responsible for the outcome of my life. Number one area that you must increase you must build your faith capacity. Faith is a universal currency that God gives to every believer. Scripture says God has given to us a measure of faith. A measure. So everybody has the same measure. And as a currency of destiny, it must be traded. If you don't trade it, it can't increase. Apostle Peter said, add to your, faith, to your faith what? Knowledge. The more you add knowledge to your faith, the more your faith is increasing in capacity. And Jesus said that just shall live by his faith. If you don't grow your faith, you will grow in life. That just shall live by his faith. Hear me? We don't assume to have faith. Faith is not an assumption. Faith is a consciousness. You remember that drama that, that brother has presented? It's a consciousness. Walking in the reality of the presence of God. You must increase. You must, it's a daily thing. Don't assume that you have faith. Faith is not an assumption. Never you assume that you have faith. You must consciously make effort to add to your faith. Add to your faith knowledge. Scripture says so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. That thou mightest observe to do all that is written therein. He said, Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have what? Good success. Every day is a day for addition. Every day, something must be added. You don't assume it. You can't increase in, in faith if there is no fellowship. If there is no time made for study in the world, every opportunity you have to study the world 
is an opportunity to increase your faith capacity, to increase your confidence, to increase your assurance, to increase your trust in God. You don't assume faith. If you assume it, you will fake it. If you fake it, it will also show. Faith is one thing you can't fake. You can't pretend to have it. When challenges come, we will know whether you have it. So you must keep adding to your faith. You must keep adding to your faith. That just shall live by his faith. Romans 10 verse 17. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. And Hebrew chapter 10 verse 38. That just shall live by his faith. Don't assume it. You don't assume it. Paul said to, uh, to Timothy, <laughs> he said, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. We can be in church and pretend to have the form. We can be in church and pretend to do what? Have the form. Where is the result? So as you are increasing your faith capacity, you're giving your destiny a chance to experience new things. For with man, it is impossible. But for with God, all things are possible. It is faith that determines what is possible for you. You live in the realm of possibilities every time you make conscious effort to walk in faith, to increase your faith. What faith does is to change the picture. Faith changes the picture of the things happening around you and give God the chance to stretch forth his hand over your life. Hear me and hear me well. <laughs> you define your outcome. Faith can define every man's outcome because faith has its root in the word of God. It can determine your outcome. Number two. Thing that we need to determine our outcome in life, we must constantly engage our heart in the labor room of prayer. Hear me and hear me well. Are you praying for me? Yes. No man can pray for you like you pray for yourself. Do you agree with me? The prayer you pray to drive your destiny cannot be compared when someone tells you, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for you. It's a lie. If someone tells you he's praying for you, he can't put the whole of his heart. He can't put the whole of his energy. He can't put the whole of his time like you that is doing it. But they said, we will give ourselves unto prayer and unto the ministry of his word. Hear me? It is your prayer that drives you into the fullness of the plan and purpose of God for your life. It is your prayer that drives your family. Hear me? It is your prayer that drives you into the center of God's way. It is your prayer that determines your open door. It is your prayer that determines your open heaven. You must pray. If you don't pray, you will become a prey. In life, if you don't pray, you will become a prey. Who was the evangelist that went to India? T.L. Osbonabi. When he went to India the first time, nothing happened. Became angry. Say with me, angry. Now went back. <laughs> he now soaked himself into prayer. Real prayer. He returned back to India. They poured water on the air. He commanded the water to suspend. And the water suspended. So the Indians that didn't want, I hope you know, occultism is heavy in India. The Indians that didn't want to listen before, they never see this type before. So they gathered. That's how he started ministering to them, one by one, and they started giving their life to Christ. Hear me and hear me where God will do uncommon things in your life. 
in case you don't go with anything, make sure you buy the message of yesterday. The message on prayer. Prayer is a force. They ask Young Cho, what is the secret of your success? Number one, prayer. Number two, prayer. Number three, prayer. Number four, prayer. Number five, prayer. Number six, prayer. They say, no, no, stop. Is there any other thing? Number seven, prayer. Number eight, prayer. Everything revolves around prayer. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man make it tremendous power available. Hear me? You need power to drive destiny. Why? Because there are witches and wizards that are angry with that star from shining. There are witches and wizards that have vowed that your star will not shine. You need power. Tell your neighbor you need power. If Jesus himself didn't go for power, I tell you the truth, he wouldn't have manifested. And scripture said, and he returned in the power of the spirit. And his fame went abroad. If you like, like prayer. If you like, don't like prayer. Now your destiny now goes suffer slow motion. It's a choice. So wherever you are coming from, whether you are coming from Kefi or Nasarawa or Akwanga or wherever you are coming from, if they call for prayer meeting, if you like, go. If you like, don't go. You are defining the outcome of your destiny. Your prayer affects you more than you think it's affecting the church. If you don't come, God will still raise people that will come. You need power to get wet. True of us. I am the Lord that God that giveth the power to get wet. You need power to be free from sickness and disease. Every day they are shooting arrow, but you need power to stay exempted. You need power for doors to open. My friend, it's time to sit up. It's time to be serious. Tell your neighbor it's time to get serious. Number three, thing that we need to determine the outcome of our life, we need the empowerment of the Holy Ghost as an individual. How many of us attended the Holy Ghost baptism today? God bless you. God bless you. How many of us got our own encounter? God bless you. God bless you. Now hear me. The treasures of life and destiny is in the hand of the Holy Ghost. He's the, he's the one that unlocks destiny. He's the one that unlocks the virtues, the treasures, the glory, the blessings. How will you collect it without him? You watch that, that drama that took place? As that um, girl was doing like shake -a <laughs> to come and uh, seduce the brother. Leruta pariada no shaka. Hear me? Any devil manipulating issues in your life, they will perish. Amen. Scripture says, He that prayeth in an unknown tongue uttereth mysteries. You don't know what they do when you sleep. Scripture say, why men slept? The enemy came to sort us. So when they saw it, when you wake up, you have reconfigured what has been disfigured. So every time you are praying in the spirit, you are configuring your destiny. Everything works by configuration. Don't allow the devil to disfigure you. That's why you are not taking it serious. You are still in shallow water. Shallow waters dry up quick, quick. Well dry up. The Holy Ghost brings you to the river realm. Rivers don't dry you. Whether rainy season or dry season, river and a river. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That's why we grow in praying in the spirit. We grow, we grow, we grow. As you are growing, hear me? You are taking command. If you are not praying in the Holy Ghost, you are not taking command. 
you take command over the issues of your life. You take command over your environment. You take command over the oppressions of the enemy. As soon as they hear of me, they shall submit themselves. They can't submit when you are Jethri. Oh Lord, I'm in your hand though. Oh Lord, fight my battle. Which battle? He said, you shall fight. He said, the Lord shall fight for you. He said, fight. Oh. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? What you fight is what I confirm. He said, no weapon formed, no fashion against thee shall prosper. He said, any tongue that rise against thee, he said, thou shall do what? He didn't say, I will condemn. He said, you shall condemn. If you don't condemn them, they remain like that. So you need the Holy Ghost. You need to grow. You need to grow in praying in the Spirit. How will you be comfortable? You have a child. One year, still doing ah 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 ah. Two years, still doing la 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 la. Won't you? Won't you be angry? Will you be comfortable? Three years, I still not been able to talk. Three years, he has still not been able to talk. Some of you, you are more than five years in the faith. And your tongues is still like a Sarah, like a Sarah, like a Sarah. I lost my Honda, I lost my Honda. It's time to graduate. Tell your neighbor it's time to graduate. If your child is still doing da, 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 da. Won't you slap him? That's why when you finish doing da, 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 they will still be flogging you the dream. Tell your neighbor again, it's time to graduate. Number four, go for revelation. Paul said, and I went up by revelation. Our revelation determines our illumination. The brighter your light, the farther you go. And I went up by what? Revelation. And Paul, the, Paul prayed a prayer in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Studio, put it very quickly as we rise up to pray. Ephesians 1, 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now look at verse 18. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the sense. Look at verse 19 now. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Hear me? You are not here for a stroll. You are on a mission. And you must accomplish your vision. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. Let me round up with this. Financially, God does not empower groups. He empowers individuals. If you are poor, it's your fault. Papa said something and I repeat. In 2015, Sons of the Prophet Conference, he said, I teach you the mystery of prosperity once in a year you go discover the others by yourself. Some of you have not heard it. I teach you the mystery of prosperity once in a year. You go discover the others by what? So if you are waiting for when manna will fall for your house, you may eat sand. Going for knowledge is the way out of poverty. The new money now is tied to knowledge. It's not tied to muscle. We are in the information age. And yet, you are still waiting for uh, federal government empowerment. Hear me? Even if they increase wage now, they will still hold you in bondage. I hope you know. There is no amount of uh, uh, increased wage of uh, workers. Increased wage of workers. It's a fool's play. 
nobody can truly pay you what you want. You are the only one that can pay yourself what you want. You know the mysteries, tithes, offering, sacrifice. But hear me, you still need to go for knowledge. You still need to go for knowledge. To know what to invest. To know what to spend. Some people's words are in their stomach. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I said something yesterday. A woman told the children, if you don't make money today, don't come back to the house. Because every day, you will drink pure water. Every day, you will brush your teeth. You will buy soap. Somebody is making money from you. What are you making? If you spend more than what you make, you'll be a poor man. True or false? You'll be a poor man. So some of us are already driving towards poverty. Many of us, many of you here, you spend. My uncle doesn't want to send me money. Go with touch his heart. This is that conference. <laughs> no, no, no. Tell your neighbor, my money is coming. Very soon, very soon, you will sponsor people to come for Easter conference. If you are saying amen, say better amen. I want to challenge you here now. If you are really serious, if you go buy this book, The Conspiracy of the Rich, The Conspiracy of What? Go and buy it. Buy it and read it. Don't rush. Be reading it small, small. Just ask them the conspiracy of the rich. It will come out. <laughs> that book is written by Robert uh, Kiyosaki and um, Donald Trump. Am I correct? Just, just ask them. It will come out. The rich will keep getting richer. And the poor will keep getting what? Poorer. You are the one that will determine where you come out of the poverty circle. Nobody. Oh. Nobody. Scripture says, work out your salvation. With what? If you don't work it out, nobody will work it out. Rise up to your feet. You are going to pray a prayer of decision. Because decision determines destination. Destiny is a product of decision. Every day we make decision to change our destination. Where will you be? I've asked this question now again in five years time. Where will you be in ten years time? Let me not take it too far. Where will you be by the same time next year? I'd like you to lift up your voice and pray. Nobody is responsible for where you are. If you are pointing hands at people, three is pointing back at you. And one is saying, God, I'm a witness. I'd like you to consciously pray from the depth of your heart. I refuse to remain on the same spot. My destiny must not remain on the same spot. My future must not remain on the same spot. Lift up your voice and talk to God. I make a conscious decision for a forceful change. I make a conscious decision to move my destiny forward. I make a conscious decision to move my career forward. I make a conscious decision. La Kodebe, Genoso, Lekete Prodia, Rijesosa, Liande, Reclopendre di Norindo, Jacucale Hado, Shado, Recota, Becoteride, Liborondo Susa Lekata, Jacuzzi de Lebrecateria. I refuse to remain on the same spot. I refuse to remain on the same spot. I refuse to remain on the same spot. Lamodo shiketere, rusa zona prekleketoria. 
I refuse to remain on the same spot. I refuse to remain on the same spot. Laboro Shikateria. Lambarando Suze Neketelete. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Someone is crying. Lord, touch the heart of pastor. I want to surrender my life to Jesus so that he can be well with me. You are here, you want to make it right with God. You want to give Jesus a chance in your life so that things can turn around. Wherever you are, inside and outside, Put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me. With your precious blood, I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray this prayer with me wherever you are, just carry your bag and your Bible and come quickly. Put your hands together for Jesus. Just come quickly. I want to pray with you. Come, come, come. God bless you. You don't need to be ashamed. God bless you. This is your best moment. This is your best moment. This is the best decision. Anybody can make. If you're coming, come quickly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. This is 